Hello, and we're really pleased you're joining us for this webinar um, as part of this important um, global summit, looking at the working conditions of social workers. I'm David Jones. I was president of the International Federation of Social Workers a good few years ago, but now I'm the chair of the steering group that is supporting this project that we're going to talk to you about um, today. And with me in a conversation about the project is Professor Germaine Revalier, who's one of the leading world experts on all of these issues. So Germaine, could you say something about yourself? Of course. Hello, everybody. My name is Germaine Revalier. I'm a professor of organisational psychology and social justice um, here at Bath Spa University. And um, yeah, my research is all about working conditions, particularly in social work, but we'll go into that in more depth in a little while. And we're also grateful to three other colleagues who've been an important part of this research. Paula McFadden, who is at Ulster University and has also done research on the working conditions and the well-being of social workers. Um, Silvana um, from uh, Argentina, who was the president of the International Federation of Social Workers. She's recently stepped down, but her, this project was very close to her heart and her interests. Uh, and Rory Trull, the uh, general secretary of um, the secretary general of the International Federation of Social Workers, um, who's also been a key part of the team. So what we wanted to do to start with was then look at working conditions in general and how social workers compare um, with other professions, similar professions and other um, organisations. Um, and then specifically to say, well, why is IFSW and social work associations interested in this? And then we're going to give you the first quick insight into the latest survey that only finished um, earlier this year, uh, around March, April. Um, so we'll give you a, a sneak peek, as it were, of those um, results, and then we'll talk about what we're going to do next. Um, so, um, Jermaine, from your vast experience and all your reading about working conditions, can you tell us a little bit about what does the research tell us about working conditions of social workers and other organisations, um, and uh, how do you go about researching this? Sure. So... Working conditions are key to all occupations, uh, whether we're talking about kind of frontline social workers as we would see them in, in the UK, or if we're talking about doctors or nurses or teachers or accountants or anybody, working conditions are really important. And they're so important because um, in the UK alone, over 2 million people blame work and working conditions each year for their ill health. And we know that working conditions, particularly uh, poor working conditions, are related to the development of heart and cardiovascular disease and of poorer physical health in general. Uh, we know that working conditions and poor working conditions are related to uh, uh, poorer subjective health, so unable uh, inability to sleep and uh, musculoskeletal pain, for example. Um, what I'd like to do, David, is just set some, set some context and then we'll look at different, uh, we'll look at occupations um, in a sec. So the reason why working conditions and stress are so important is because they affect not just the individual social worker who is so important to, to the whole of the world actually, but it affects the organizations that they work for and ultimately the service users and, and people that they work with. Um, in the UK alone, uh, stress and working conditions are responsible for about 100 billion pounds worth of year uh, 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 of sickness absence and, and other costs per year. And it's this, the longest, uh, the biggest cause of long term sickness absence. So anything that lasts over four weeks. Um, from the work that we've done with social workers in the UK over the last six or seven years, we've seen that these working conditions are really, really poor, poorer than uh, about 95% of our other occupations. So you compare working conditions for social workers with, as I said, teachers and doctors and nurses and um, accountants and 
uh, engineers and any other occupation you can think of and social work have amongst the worst working conditions in the UK. Now, globally, we're going to look at those results in a second too. But I guess the question is, what are working conditions? So working conditions are those, um, those elements of work that you are exposed to each and every day. We can think about things like demands or workload, how much work you have to do, but equally how um, difficult that work is, so the complexity of work. We can think about support that we get from managers or support that we get from our colleagues. We can think about um, the relationships we have with other people and we can think about how change is communicated, for example. They are all examples of working conditions and all of the literature shows that if those working conditions are left in a poor state over uh, an extended period of time, then it's likely to lead to physical and psychological uh, impacts on the individual. So we're, we're not just talking about the physical environment, the desks and the chairs and whether you've got a telephone and those things. We're talking about relationships with managers, the sort of work that people are doing, the, the amount of control they have over their work. So we're, we're talking about quite a broad range of things that affect people when they're in work. Exactly that, yeah. And, and um, interestingly, working conditions don't often um, relate to the physical stuff, as, as you've been saying. But interestingly, in every survey, pretty much, that I've ever run in um, social work, and there have been lots, we've spoken to tens of thousands of social workers across the years, um, no one has ever really mentioned the physical, the physical stuff. It is all of those other things that we've been talking about, David. Um, so, David, why, why are working conditions? Why is this important for IFSW and for social work organisations uh, generally? Well, obviously, um, as you've said, um, the, the working environment, the relationships with managers, the um, sort of work that people are doing affects people's well-being. And when your well-being is affected, when your psychology or your physical health is, is uh, affected negatively, then you're not able to do such good work. You're not able to relate so well to the service users, the communities, the individuals you're working with. Um, and uh, that is a, a real um, a problem. It affects people in a very practical, real way, and it makes it more difficult to do the work. Um, so that's a really important thing. We're looking after the, the well-being of social workers themselves. That's important in its own right. But it's not only about that. It's about the community and the way, it, the, the, the place that people are set. And if we want really good social work and if we want really good social environment, if we, even if we want to achieve the SDGs, the, so the, the Sustainable Development Goals, at talking at those big levels, we need social workers who are able to do the work in an effective way. And it's fantastic that social workers achieve so much in such a negative context. Actually, they're uh, absolutely amazing that, that what, what can be achieved. But think what could be done if the working environment was just that little bit better. And there are messages also, of course, for managers and the way people organise um, social work. And that's also important for us to look at. Um, so those are some of the things that the IFSW wants to campaign, campaign on with unions and, and with others. And of course, what this global summit is all about, Jermaine. Great. So is it worth, I mean, do we need to unpack that more or, or shall we move on to looking at what the survey has, has done and what we've been trying to do. Perhaps you could say a little about the tools that, that you use. How do we measure these, these um, yeah. very abstract concepts? Yeah, so um, I, I think it's probably clear, but I, I guess just, to, just to, to highlight that the aims of this, of this whole project, this is the second in a kind of, in a line of, of pieces of work that, that we'll be doing between IFSW and Buffs Bar and Ulster University. Um, but the aim is to effectively to look at working conditions in social work across the world. So there's plenty of evidence in the UK now um, and there's emerging evidence in other countries. But actually, we can look at this from a broader global perspective. And that's what this does. Um, 
A couple of things just to highlight. First of all, it's an academic piece of work. So I'm, a, I'm an I'm a academic. I'm not a social worker. I'm, I'm objective. So I'm not coming into this with any preconceived ideas. Um, and ultimately, I think what we'll be able to do is show the importance of social workers. And just as David has said, the difficult situations that you tend to be working under. So the way that we are measuring working conditions is we use a, the same kind of measures each and every year. We use one measure called the Management Standards Tool, uh, which was released in the UK by the Health and Safety Executive. And it measures seven areas of the workplace, seven working conditions, those things that we've already spoken about. We also have measures of well-being as well. So psychological well-being, how, how psychologically well you are. Um, the, other, the other question that we have, or the other set of questions that we have are some open-ended questions. Uh, and we're not gonna reflect on those today, but what we are going to do is just highlight the question that we asked and we asked, how can we make things better? What can we do to make things better? We translated all of the questions, all of the tools into six different languages, I think it was. So we had English and Spanish and French and Latvian and Polish and another that I can't remember off the top of my head, but into six different languages. Um, and we distributed the survey electronically uh, via IFSW links and via social media and, and you know, all of those kind of things. So that's what we did and, and that's how we did it. And perhaps worth um, saying that we're, we're very aware this is a groundbreaking research and doing this in social work um, across the whole world um, has never been done before. Um, uh, and uh, as, as you say, the, the amount of literature on the well-being of social workers is incredibly small. There is um, stuff we have been increasingly being sent material from a number of countries, but nobody has really systematically looked at this in a comparative way. Um, and we know that, that there are limitations, there are difficulties in parts of the world of getting online, um, although increasingly people are able to get online and phones are available um, and system, systems in, in Africa and Asia, as well as in North America, Europe and uh, Latin America. Um, but we've also obviously got to take note of those limitations, but there's, the evidence is coming out is pretty um, significant. So it's worth just looking at some of the main headlines from the latest research and knowing we're going to be building on this in two years time. Sure. Um, so I think the headline finding, David, is we are seeing continually pretty poor working conditions for social workers across the world. Now, there are some differences when we look at differences across region, which I'll, I'll relate to shortly. But overall, we're seeing continually poor working conditions. And I think the thing that really highlights uh, these working conditions is effectively what you said earlier. Um, social workers do such a fantastic job despite having so much difficulty associated with that job with respect to the, these working conditions. So the things that we measured, we measured seven working conditions in particular, and um, I will kind of reflect on which regions across the world seem to score better on certain working conditions than other, others. And then we can look at comparing 2020 to 2022. So it was almost kind of pre-pandemic, wasn't it, the first survey? Um, don't remember what life was like pre-pandemic, but um, we can do some comparisons to now. So the seven areas that we that we measured were workload, so how much work, so the sheer amount of work that you have to do. It was control or autonomy, so that is how much control you have over the way that you do your job. We looked at managerial support, so how much support you get from your managers, uh, as well as peer support, so how much support you get from those around you, from your colleagues. Uh, we looked at relationships, what your relationships are like with your peers and your managers. We looked at how well you understand your role and how well change is communicated across the world. Now, highlight top level uh, uh, findings. First of all, working conditions are continually poor. If we compared to the UK national average 
of working conditions, not just for social workers, but for all industries, we would see um, scoring in the bottom 90%, so in the bottom 10th percentile, really, really poor working conditions. We saw slightly better working conditions generally across um, the Asia and Pacific working uh, uh, region and continually poor scoring across the Latin America and Caribbean uh, regions. Now, a small highlight is that, uh, or a small caveat, is that we only had a few hundred responses from each of these regions, from each of Latin America and Caribbean and Asia Pacific. But it seems like there's quite a dichotomy. Now, despite the Asia Pacific region seemingly performing or scoring better than the Latin America Caribbean region, they were still really poor overall results. So um, if we think about demands, workload, for example, uh, we saw Latin American Caribbean colleagues scoring uh, the lowest out of all of our regions and Asia Pacific scoring highest. That was, um, that, those findings were, were kind of replicated in the managerial support area. So how much support you get from your managers. And similarly, it was um, found in the change uh, working conditions. So how well change is communicated in your organization. Um, Latin America and Caribbean colleagues also scored the worst out of everybody that we that we measured on support that they received from their colleagues, so peer support, and also relationships. So kind of having strained relationships and sometimes the experience of bullying in um, at work. Um, finally, uh, we have our, our Asia Pacific colleague score scored kind of the best amongst our sample on control. So how much control they have over their work. And then our North American colleagues scored best on peer support and relationships. So overall, um, generally working conditions were once again, pretty poor, relatively poor uh, compared to lots of other industries and lots of other occupations. But um, there were some, some pretty stark differences between regions and particularly between Latin America and Caribbean social workers and those in the Asia Pacific region. The only other thing I wanted to highlight, David, before we, um, before we kind of uh, sum up was comparing the poorest scorers in this year's survey to the poorest scorers in the 2020 survey to see if there's been much movement. So um, I think, as I just said, so Latin America and Caribbean colleagues scored poorest on five of those working conditions. And that trend was continued from 2020 uh, in 2020, where they scored seemingly worst on support from managers, support from colleagues and relationships. And that support that we get from the people around us at work is so important. All of the literature suggests that having significant good levels of support from man managers and peers is the one thing that can support us and potentially stop us from having kind of stress related uh, sickness absence and and those kind of things and unfortunately for our latin america and Co uh, caribbean colleagues both in 2020 and in 2022 those three areas were found to be continually poor the worst out of all of the regions that we looked at so i think there's some co some conversations and some work that needs to be done around that um with the other areas the only um there, there were a few bits of movement. So in 2020, for example, our North, North American colleagues, in particular the United States and, and Canadian colleagues, scored poorest on demands and role and change. But um, uh, again, the kind of our Latin American and Caribbean colleagues kind of um, uh, stood out this time as being poor in those areas. So. Um, some change from 2020 to 2022, there's the potential that that changes because of the people who are taking part, 
you know different people took part of it across the across the two years but you know across the thousands of responses that we had i think we can be relatively consistent in 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 our arguments and overall i think that peer support managerial support and relationships are so important and, and something that really needs to be to be worked on and this thank you jermaine and and it always seems to me paradoxical in social work that our training is all about relationships and the importance of how we get on with each other um, and improving our relationships. And yet somehow but we seem to have such difficulty applying that learning in our own work settings. And that's perhaps sometimes because managers and social workers and politicians who very often are controlling social work um, don't have that background and don't have that training, but they need to learn it. And I suppose um, if we were to say, what are we going to do with this? Well, clearly we feed it in. Um, the, 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 the first thing to say is, as Jermaine emphasised, that this is um, objective academic research based on well-tested um, uh, instruments for research, which have been applied in a number of different settings. Um, and uh, Jermaine and, and uh, Paula and their teams, and we hope as the, 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 the survey builds, that we all involve um, colleagues, academic colleagues from around the world to develop this, um, but um, that, that this is an objective study. So we can say to the politicians, to the United Nations, to this summit, that the objective evidence is that social workers are struggling with some of the most difficult working environments of any profession and are achieving phenomenal things, but think how much more they could do with a better um, management culture and a better um, working environment. And th this is not just social workers and special pleading, it's about how we help people so that no one is left behind. That is the key um, focus of this summit. Um, so IFSW is committed to continuing this, to doing these surveys every two years, but I suppose my plea to you who are watching and those who are listening is that we need your participation in the survey in future years. We publicize it as widely as we can, um, but it is groundbreaking research. It is demonstrating the importance of social work and it's demonstrating the importance of changing the culture of social work agencies. Of course, some do it brilliantly. And we know that and that's why it's important that um, others do it as well. We're running out of time, Jermaine, um, but um, uh, is there anything else by way of summing up? Uh, uh, I, I think you summed up really nicely, David. I, I think that the only last thing to say is thanks again to our collaborators and, and the biggest thanks to everybody who, who's taken part over the last um, few years. And yeah, we, we're, we'll kind of, IFSW, I'm sure, will continue to, to fight to make a difference. Well, thank you very much for all your research and to the team that, that works with you doing all the analysis. Um, and it's a, a real key message out of this um, webinar for the, the conference as a whole, is that if we want to improve the social environment of people around the world, social workers are crucial to that. And if they're gonna do their job effectively, they need to have a better culture, a better working environment, and that that ultimately is the responsibility of managers and of politicians who set the tone. And this is not about special pleading. It's about creating a world, a new eco-social world, where no one is left behind. And social workers have an important contribution to that. And their working environment can make or break that contribution. Well, we hope you found this interesting. There are academic publications that will be around. There's more material on the IFSW website and Jermaine's articles are um, always worth reading. Um, so, and Paula's as well. So thank you very much indeed for watching. And uh, we're always interested to communicate with you as well. So you can find us easily on uh, social media and in other ways. But for now from Jermaine and myself, thank you very much and goodbye. <laughs>